Welcome to another episode of The You. My name is Rafael Lemo Ochoa. Isn't it nice that we can use the Cisco Icebox in order to control things like authentication, authorization, and accounting? And the question is, how does this work? You know, how does a router or a controller or even a firewall send this information over to the Icebox? Well, the way that we make that happen is by using a protocol called RADIUS. RADIUS provides us a very simple mechanism in order to send this information for the icebox to process and then give us a decision on whether or not that particular request is going to be accepted. Now, the question then becomes, how do we make sure that the Cisco icebox is going to go ahead and only accept specific requests from specific devices that are authorized to send those requests. This is where we can use control mechanisms within ICE in order to make that happen, because let's be honest, we can't trust anybody. Can we? So let's go ahead and show you how to do this with the Cisco icebox and controlling the RADIUS protocol to only allow specific devices and also show you how we can go ahead and troubleshoot specific problems. As part of the process of exploring RADIUS on ICE, we're gonna go through three steps. First, we're gonna go ahead and add devices on ICE for RADIUS communication. On step number two, we will enable RADIUS on that iOS device and then test a AAA account to verify communication. On step number three, we will look at the logging to verify the results that we're expecting. And then we're going to look at debugs on iOS in order to troubleshoot basic and advanced communication problems that can occur when using Radius. So now that we've added the switch to the Cisco ICE configuration for authorizing it to send Radius requests, now we need to configure the appropriate iOS commands in order for us to send Radius requests with the correct password that we set on the icebox. To do that, we need to go into the global configuration mode of this router. We then need to use the radius server command, and then we need to specify a name that we want to give this radius server configuration. In this case, we're going to call it ice-1. And then using the address command, we're going to specify that we're going to be using an IPv4 address, and then specifying the IP address of that ice box. From there, we can then push enter and then use the key command to specify the password that we want to use to send the radius request. From there, we can go ahead and exit and then use the show run section command and then use radius uh, space server. And we will see what we've just configured. Notice that we're using ports 1645 for authentication and 1646 for accounting. Those are the default ports that are used on iOS devices. On non-iOS devices for the authentication port, we will be using 1812, and the accounting, we will be using 1813. Now, you can change this on an iOS device, but the Icebox listens to all four of these anyways. So now that we've configured this, how do we test this to make sure that the password that we just configured is correct and also the IP address is correct. To do that, we will use the test AAA command group, and then specify that we're going to be configure that we're going to be using the radius group for this. From there, we're going to be using the name of the user we want to use. In this case, we're going to be using an Active Directory user that's already configured on the icebox. And from there, we're going to specify the password and then use the new code command at the end and see what the results will be. And as you can see, it was rejected. Now, this could be for a variety of different reasons. In this particular case, we misconfigured the IP address. It actually should be 10.10.10.30. Now, to address that problem, we're going to go back into that configuration using the same name that we used before. And then using the address command, we're going to go ahead and fix that problem and switch it to 30, exit, and then try again. And this time, it should be successful. After we have sent our test authentication request over to ICE, 
ICE will go ahead and record that on the login. To see that information, we will go onto the left-hand menu, select Operations, Live Log, and then from there you will see all of the attempts that we made using the Employee One account that we used on the iOS device. If we click on the Details option, we will see the request that we sent over and all the information that was processed during that request, including any of the authorization results that were processed during that time. This provides us a really good way for us to troubleshoot what happened during the authentication process. To perform more advanced troubleshooting for RADIUS issues, it's recommended to use the debug RADIUS command. This will enable RADIUS debugging on the iOS device. Now, if you were to go ahead and run that authentication test again, it will show you an output of all the information that we sent and received from the icebox. Now, if you go to the top, you will see the initial access request. This is the request that is sent by the iOS device over to the icebox to process this request. As long as the password information was correct that we've configured on the switch that was also configured on the icebox, we will go ahead and receive a response. As you can see, the access request contains the username, password information, and the type of service that we're trying to access. Now, once we receive a response back from the icebox, this will come back in the form of an access reject or an access accept. An access reject obviously means that the icebox rejected the information because of a bad password or you're not authorized for access or some other type of limitations that the ICE administrator has configured. In this case, we received an access accept. So as you can see, with the RADIUS protocol, we can send authentication, authorization, and accounting information over to the Cisco Icebox. And also, we can provide some mechanisms within the Icebox in order to control what devices can send us this information for processing. We also showed you how to do some basic and advanced troubleshooting. So that way you can address some of the more complex problems when you're dealing with RADIUS. I will see you in the next video. And thanks again.